Lindsay! Lindsay, Lindsay, I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing? Oh, hi, Sarah. I just went for a walk, <laughs> clear the head, have some think time. Ah, oh, yeah, you, um, you stuck. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? But on your audio drama writing, if, see, if I, if I get stuck, well, I have this, like, seven-step plan to do and I just can't think anymore and I'm not sure what to do. So walking is, um, step, ah, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. Okay, so what's step one? Chocolate. Two? Chocolate. There's a different chocolate, though, like a, another, another box. Another box. Mm. And step three? <gasps> wait, well, don't, wait, wait, don't tell me. Chocolate? Wine. Oh. Yep. As it's chocolate, chocolate, red wine, white wine, gin, walk, shower, and things. Seven steps. <laughs> Though I often just fall asleep after step four for some reason. I can't think. Mm. Oh. And seven is so seven is a shower and things. Yeah. Yeah. A shower and I don't know singing and reading other plays and dancing and making up songs on the ukulele and phoning a friend and watching films and listening to more groovy audio drama rama rama. In the shower. Mm. Sometimes. Oh, it's starting to rain. Well, if we're uh, really stuck, we should try all seven steps at once. Hmm? Look, uh, I've got big pockets and uh, a few bars of chalk. Just happen to have these on me. Uh, some Chateau Neuf du Pas, oh these my. glasses, and uh, we're walking in the rain, so there's the shower. Oh <laughs> but uh, I bet the ideas are going to come thick and fast now. <laughs> yes. Well... Helping you drink and eat al fresco with the hint of petrichor in the air is, mm. to be honest, a lovely brain resetter. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, pour away and we can ponder our plots, unless you're a pantser. Ah, Sunday. I'm going commando today. <laughs> Ooh. People of the world, welcome to episode nine of the AdWit podcast of the audio script writing joy, the audio drama writer's independent toolkit. I am Lindsay. And I'm Sarah. And yes, welcome. How are ya? I am very good because we got some mail from (gasps) our audience, which I'm very excited about. (laughs) Our listener. (laughs) I'm very excited. Yes, that must be what that download was. (laughs) So we got a lovely, lovely email uh, from Lee Shackelford, and the email said, Ladies, a thousand thank yous for this most recent adwit. I'm a little bit obsessed with War of the Worlds and have performed in recreations of the Notorious Radio Play many times. So I was delighted to hear you talking about it, especially from the point of view of the challenges presented in adapting such a novella to radio. Yes. I'm in the midst of adapting a play of mine for a live audio production schedule for this November. Mm -hmm. Some aspects of it are driving me a little bit nuts. (laughs) So the guidance and reminders I heard in this episode were, to say the least... Timely and welcome. Hooray. Lee Shackelford oh. of Shackelford Freelance. We love you, Lee Shackelford of Shackelford Freelance. Yes, go listen to Relativity Pod, dudes. <laughs> so Lee Shackelford does Relativity Pod. And he's a gorgeous gold boxer shorted Pluto in Oz9, as well as lots of other things. Yes. Ooh. Hooray for Lee. Thank Ooh. you, Lee. That's so nice to hear from you. We love hearing from folks who listen to the, yes. the show. And uh, well. I hope that Mm. our inspiration continues to be helpful. For sure. So we also got a very interesting email from a student named Rowan Russell. Huzzahs for students and hello, Rowan. Hello. (laughs) And Rowan, let's see, Rowan wrote us a long, lovely email. And I'm thinking to myself. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful (laughs) world. So Rowan said, my name is Rowan Mm -hmm. and I'm a second year student studying film and media at Exeter College. I'm about to commence my final major project. I have chosen to create and edit my own fictional series podcast, which I will record and edit an episode of and create a website and brand identity to sell it, which is very ambitious. Very exciting. I was deeply inspired by your podcast and all the writing you have done on podcasts. I particularly like the article Best Fiction Podcasts, my top 10 audio dramas for 2021 at thepodcasthost.com. And would love to ask your advice and maybe get a few pointers from someone with such great expertise and creativity. Well, well you, I think I have. I think I have <laughs> some expertise and creativity. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay. I have autism. And have always found that podcasts have helped me to boost my confidence and escape the real world that often makes me feel anxious. Me too, Rowan. Indeed. Same, same. Creative writing has always been an outlet for me to express myself, even from a young age. Yo, Tom Bien, Rowan. I am right there Mm -hmm. with you. 
I particularly mm-hmm. enjoy your podcast due to your amazing talent of being able to portray the story with such uniqueness and creativity and for the way it draws me in and makes me feel part of the story and the bigger listening audience community. Aw, I feel like I become part of the world I am listening to. I hope one day to become a podcast fictional story writer. I appreciate you must be very busy. However, it would mean so much for me to hear back from you. Kind regards and appreciation, Rowan Russell. Oh, Rowan, we love you. <laughs> Rowan, that is great. That's so um, exciting and, and happy creating. I hope your project goes beautifully if you need any voice actors. So. <laughs> yes, I really, I would like to see more audio drama yes. and less audio trauma. Oh, totally. <laughs> If you know what I mean, <laughs> I would like there to be less. I have a note on a green post-it stuck on uh, my desk that says not green. Goodness. Yeah, it says you do have time to podcast. You just don't have time for frustration. <laughs> so what do you say we move on with this episode? Well, I think that's a marvelous idea, but we are very appreciative of folks getting in contact. And you too can do so. Absolutely. And send us an email to writersadwit at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we anyway, would love to hear from you. So, Lindsay, how are you? How are you, my well, friend? Um, well, I think, we, I think we should talk about stuck and unstuck. I yeah. mean, I thought, yeah, I, th- I think we need to move on with this episode. Yes, brilliant. We do, do, do. So, hello, listener. What are you doing today? What are you up to? Oh, really? Well, yeah, I do, I do hope that clears up for you. Good. Good, yes. Yeah, please stop talking now. We've got an episode to do. Anyway, this is the podcast to help you gain more skill, insight and wherewithal to make your audio fiction script simply better and get your creative juices flowing. I think we're going to need a mop to soak up all of these creative juices, Sarah. You have been very creative lately. How do you do it? Well, Lindsay, I just do it. Hmm? There's the rub, eh? I, uh, I think just doing it rather than talking about doing it, spending years planning doing it, telling other people how excited I am about doing it and not actually doing it is how I do it. See, when I when I do it, I get it done. I find I find inspiration everywhere. I mean, I, I could write a whole comedy skit on characters based on each item of clothing I'm wearing right now, for example. But that aside, for folks who are stuck right now, can you say, Lindsay, why they might be stuck? What's going on there? Uh, feeling stuck, writer's block, etc. It happens for a bunch of reasons. Mm. The um, people say, oh, I just need to move forward. I just need to move forward. But sometimes you got to deal with the why yes. so you can get to the how. Indeed. Maybe you haven't been able to concentrate quietly for enough time Mm. to think your way through what you want to write about. True. Interruptions are real. What are they? They're sorry, Lindsay. What what would you say? They're real. Okay. They. they, I find that to not deal with interruptions. Yes, they happen though, don't they? These interruptions. Sometimes people just just keep interrupting. Hey, Sarah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. <laughs> Interrupting cow. No! Yes, okay. Stop. I'll stop. <laughs> okay. So set boundaries around your writing time. What do you recommend people do? I recommend that people set boundaries around the writing time. Like yeah. from two to four, I'm writing Do Not Bother Me. I also recommend going for a walk. Yeah. Uh, meditation. Learn how to let distracting thoughts go. And focus on the train of thought that you need. Indeed. Relax that jaw right now. Ah. Oh, relax your neck. Relax ah. your jaw. Relax your Relax neck. your shoulders. Ah. Ah. Feel the floor. Feel the clothes that you're on. Feel, feel the, yes. the world around you. Feel your ah. breath going in and out of your mouth and your nose. Oh I God. hope you're not listening to this while you're driving or operating <laughs> heavy machinery. <laughs> Often, starting writing is just the way to go. Let's just start it now. Sorry, I was interrupting yes. again. Stop it, Sarah. <sighs> Sarah. Sarah. No more interrupting cows. Hey, things have a way of falling into place once you start putting the letters in order to make words and words in order to make sentences. Indeed. Writing by hand instead of writing by typing. Oh. Linda Berry does a lot of work about the human brain and creativity. Linda Berry mm. is a, I don't know what the word is for a comic book artist anymore, but uh, Linda Berry does a lot of work about the human brain and creativity. I highly recommend reading her books, Syllabus, and Making Comics, and trying out the exercises in her books, because they're they're not specifically intended for comic writers. Mm. They're very good for anyone who needs to 
engage in creative problem solving. I just want to say I love that thing of actually writing in your own handwriting. I mean, I haven't written mm-hmm. anything for ages other than signed my name on various voice acting contracts. I don't think I've done anything else with my mm-hmm. actual writing. I kind of mm-hmm. think that is so key, isn't it? That connection with brain and writing the words is something. Yeah, there's sort of that mm-hmm. head, heart, hand Yes, yes, But also another thing about it is that writing by hand is slower than typing. And there sort of seems to be a little bit of time to edit as you're writing by hand. You could sort of go, no, wait, this is a better word. Okay. Mm. Or something as you're writing. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, time and space to focus is definitely key. Yes, I do agree uh, in this. And and sometimes a headache of a life, isn't it? But (laughs) I find that that by being creative, I actually am automatically more creative. I think ideas lead to more ideas, don't they? And yeah, maybe it it can also be that you you have the block because you don't have enough information perhaps to move forward. Sometimes you need to do some research. Sometimes sometimes you just need to, to, I don't know, daydream. Okay, Sarah, snap out of that. Oh, yep, sorry. yep. Okay, oh, we've so got a fun. podcast to do. Oh, leave yep. me alone. But you're absolutely, <clears throat> hey, get back here. Sorry, sorry. But Neil Gaiman has a great article that he wrote for The Guardian about libraries and daydreaming. Mm-hmm. And we will put that in the show notes. We will, we will. Neil Gaiman, we will. And don't be afraid to throw stuff out. Yeah. Uh, when I wrote my play Traveling Light, one of the things I'm proudest of ever, mm-hmm. we had a fifth character and we threw him out after casting. <gasps> yeah. We oh, voice act. and be well no, it's fine. You know? Needs must. Yeah. No, 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 no. It it was a a good thing because what happened was we had a director who was very fixated on having a particular actor play the lead role. Yeah. And I was advocating really hard for another actor. Mm-hmm. And the director said, he doesn't have enough experience. How are you supposed to get experience? <laughs> Catch 29 and, million. Yeah, exactly. So I, so we cast him as that fifth character. And then the director got another project that he felt was better for him. Uh-huh. And the lead actor got another project that he felt was better for him. Uh-huh. And when I got... Uh, a new director who, quite honestly, was better for me. <laughs> I said, I want to recast the guy playing the fifth character as the lead yep. and either recast or cut this fifth character. <gasps> and she said, there's no reason to have this fifth character rest in here. Yeah, yep, the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah, the rest is history. That's brave. So, oh, do it. You, have you need to, to. Well, you have to it. let yourself, you have to leave space for you to be surprised. Ooh. Boo. Hey. Oh, sorry, that's not the same. Okay. Another thing is, Go for a walk yeah, no, I or agree. pace. It doesn't matter. You can walk on a treadmill. You can pace around mm-hmm. wherever. You can yep. go outside for a walk in nature. You can go to the go to the mall. Someone's back. There was yep. Stanford University mm. dedicates a lot of <laughs> yeah. They dedicate a lot of scientific research to the science of creativity. Bless them. Because they're in California. They're in Silicon Valley. Oh, man. They need... Wish I was there. I'd love to be yeah. there. <laughs> but... Anyway, um, sorry, I'm interrupting again. They did a study that said you don't have to go for a walk in nature. You don't have to go for a walk in a particularly inspiring place. Uh-huh. You really can just move, pace around your office or whatever yep. you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the movement that's important. Yeah, I mean, I think that... All is valid, one hundred percent, and I think especially with every like with everything creative, I think it's about finding out what works for you, isn't it? I mean, I think as a, mm-hmm. as a mummy and a wife and a pal and an auntie and niece and granddaughter and cousin and teacher and a podcast host and voice actor and writer and whatever else I am or hat I wear, I think there are, there are always things that get in my way to write, and I I just have so much within me. I want to get out, Lindsay, mm-hmm. um, and I just think the best thing that I've started to do is to prioritize some time every week for my writing mm-hmm. so so for example I've set up that on Mondays between 10 and 12 that's my writing time it's almost like it's a club I paid for right it's a thing mm-hmm. that I enjoy a sport club drum club whatever and 
I'm attending that for my good health and for my happiness, right? And I think organising that into my week has truly helped me and just keeping to it. And I know some folks who set these amazing kind of specific targets and goals, and I've started to play with setting word counts, but I'm not sure that's helpful for me at the moment, But or scene limits for first drafts and things like that, or targets to get, you know, three scenes written or or just the character notes for a specific number of folks. Just making it part of my Mm -hmm. routine has just helped. I just think anything that shows I've moved forward rather than just retaining more in my head is great. And I I know some folks who, you know, they get up at five o'clock in the morning and right before the day begins. And all I could think of is sod that, but I I, I don't get to bed till about two o'clock anyway. But <laughs> yeah, you you really should stop that. Yeah, maybe I should. You really should yeah get a please get a good night's sleep I sleep know. is important this beauty sleep is important for your brain health it is my brain my yeah. whole brain my brain hurt, hurt. It's, it's like yeah. how your brain gets into a you know it's like putting your phone into a charging station yes ma'am anyways i'm glad you're getting into a routine thank you so okay let's talk about idea debt and oh. idea vomit <laughs> jessica uh. abel talks about idea debt uh-huh. The uh, the idea, I don't know why she chose to call it debt, okay. D-E-B-T. Um, I'm going to link to her article about this in the show notes, but basically her idea, her concept is when you're creative, your creativity isn't just in one area. You mm-hmm. have lots of things that you want to do. So, you know, me, for example, my family room is a mess right now. I've got multiple knitting projects. I've got multiple watercolor sets that I just paint watercolor when I'm when I need to relax. I've got mm. all kinds of different things, but sometimes you just have to have a ton of ideas and all of those ideas can have their place in time. Mm. But if you're working toward a goal, you got to pick one yeah. and you need to put yourself into idea debt and work to done. Okay. Work to the point that the project is done. You mean finish something, Lindsay? Yeah. It's like, exactly. It's one thing for me to say to myself, I've got three knitting projects and I've got my watercolors. And okay, if I'm going to give myself like, you know, an hour to to relax at night, I can either knit or do watercolor. Mm -hmm. But I can't do both because it would get very messy. (laughs) (laughs) You stick your knitting through the canvas. It could, yeah. Mm. I'm working on a baby burp speaking of vomit i'm working on baby burp cloths for a baby gift for somebody and it's like yeah here's something for your child to vomit on and i don't think i'd want to put watercolor paints on that so anyway jessica abel's idea is pick one pick one idea and just work on that to done and don't work on you know if you've got five ideas for scripts pick one but idea vomit can be good here's why for example Every morning I get up and I write in my journal for 30 minutes. I set a timer and I write in my journal for 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be good. It's just writing. It's just straight writing. I used to use a tool called Write or Die. Write or Die is a tool that if you're, you, you just type and type and type. And if you stop typing, it makes a horrible noise. And, and it's a different horrible noise. The the noises are different at random. You might get a baby crying. You might get alarm bells screaming at you. It's it's horrible. But the point is, you get a little bit of a warning. And another thing is it also has a mode called kamikaze mode. Kamikaze mode is when if you stop typing, it starts backspacing over your text, taking away. So it's like if you care about your words, you keep going, you know, no matter what. I found a way to trick it out, though. You hit the, you hit uh, space return, space return, space return, space return. That's terrible. I know. No, this should be writing. But it's a good way. If you're if you need idea generation, it's it's a very good tool. And it's a very good tool to get yourself into a writing habit. It's a good warm up. Uh-huh. When you have too many ideas, it's almost impossible to get any one of them done. Yeah. This is yeah. true, Lindsay. And, and what you sort of have to do is you sort of have to preserve your extra ideas and put them in a notebook somewhere and save them for later okay. when you need them, because the day will come that you're going to need it. My least favorite kind of person in the entire world, it seems like it doesn't matter what kind of writer you are. Mm-hmm. There are some people who will just 
grab you by the scruff of the neck at cocktail parties and say, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a writer. Really? Because I've got this great idea for a novel and you should write it. (laughs) I have so many ideas and I just need someone to write them all down. Mm -hmm. Will you do it for me? I hate these people with the fire of a thousand suns. If Only you just a thousand. Got... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, well, I I have other hatred that I save for other people. But if, you know, it, if he just got I started... I don't want to be you, in that book. <laughs> yeah. I, if he just got started, you'd see what this whole writing thing is all yes, about. Just do it, Just people, do it. Do yeah, it. Get see, it done. Yes, do it Yes, it's yourself. difficult, but it's fun. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, so another thing about idea debt or idea vomit, is that a lot of people will think about a project a whole lot, but never actually do anything about it. And what you need to do is you need to admit that you just like to think about it and then let it go. go. I have projects that I like to, yeah, I have projects that I like to think about too, and I know I'm not going to write them. (laughs) I had this great idea about a planet of people who can choose when to have mental illness. Yeah, well, you know, in times of, of like, like when they go into battle. Oh, okay. The, mm. Yeah, they have they have like a SIM card in their head that they can pop out. Right. And they could take it out and like put it in a, you know, a necklace or a necklace locket or a pocket or something like mm-hmm. that. And then they could go into berserker mode uh-huh. and then get really depressed and go to sleep and pop their SIM card back in and reboot and then they're fine. Sounds amazing. Um, Just think of the family yeah. plans on those SIM cards. Oh, I know. The data rate is going to be awful. <laughs> it's very expensive. But, you know, at best, this is a side planet in a Star Trek episode. Okay. If I were... Yeah, if I were all that interested in writing it, I would have written it by now. Okay. Mm. Another thing is that people have a tendency to try to put 40 pounds of cats into a 20-pound bag. Oh, well, please don't put cats in bags. <laughs> yeah, you thought that you thought that cat episode was painful. Oh, a lot of times. Oh, everywhere. Yeah. Sarah. <laughs> uh, a lot of times, especially when artists are just starting out mm. and they get their first structured opportunity, like a commission or a grant, or a yeah. workshop, or a class, even. They want to prove how smart they are. Yeah. So they try to stuff everything they know into <laughs> one project, as if they will never have a project where they're taken seriously ever again. So oh, now is the time Lindsay. for them to shove every idea in there. <laughs> but, you know, I'm laughing because I think anyone for coffee was kind of like that, as my women's health podcast I did last mm-hmm. year. Um, and I truly did not ever even consider I would be successful in that funding process. So so it had far too much in there to be sensible, but I did make it. I made it and it's out there and it's got women's real life stories and people should listen yeah. because I think it's, I'm proud of what we've achieved together. And uh, yeah. I do want to just go back and edit it again and again and again. No, I do, I do. No, it. no, no. Leave it alone. Okay. It's its own it is its own art. Oh, yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. And congratulations on that. Getting it done and out. You should be proud of that. You finished something. I you did. finished a project. It's a helpful yeah. podcast. Okay. And Thank it you. it exists on its own. And then you can use that energy to move yourself on to the next yes, project. I can. Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, really, you're in good company. The best example of this that I can think of off the top of my head uh-huh. is Leonardo da Vinci's painting, The Adoration of the Magi. Magi, 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 Magi. Magi, yes. Magi. You say Magi, I say Magi. I don't know. <laughs> um, Leonardo da Vinci got this commission at age 29 okay. or 28 or 29. He was, it was... A few years older than you then, Lindsay. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, he was so old. And I mean, the Renaissance <laughs> men under 30 list hadn't been created yet. Oh, yep. Yeah. And he he got this commission to paint a picture of the three wise men adoring the Virgin Mary and baby G. Bless. And nice. yes, and he crammed every single thing he knew about painting yes. and history and battles mm. and the golden ratio and Secret societies and all kinds of different stuff. He crammed everything he knew into one painting so and never finished it. <gasps> Ever. He left town <gasps> the following year. Right. Never finished it. Wow. And the people commissioning it saw it and said, yeah, um, all we wanted was a nice picture of the three wise men <laughs> greeting the baby Jesus. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's, it's like that, that thing <sighs> that, what was it? That sketch with uh, John Cleese and mm. not Michael Palin, Eric Idle, 
talking about, uh, you know, we wanted to have only one Christ. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and he says, what? Not not a, a fat one to balance out the two skinny ones. <laughs> yeah. The first full-length play that I ever finished writing was a play called A Moment's Monument. Mm -hmm. And it was such a rabbit hole of research. It's about the deathbed confessions of Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Mm -hmm. I tried to cram every single thing I could find out about the pre-Raphaelites and their influences into it. Huh? It's a 400-page play. <gasps> Let's hope nobody ever reads it. Oh. I wrote it to prove to myself that I could write a big historic play. It's about the sibling relationship between Dante Gabriel Rossetti and Christina Rossetti and their different approaches to art and life. Wow. And every single time I give it to somebody to read, they suddenly become real busy. Oh, no, but it sounds so amazing. It, thank you. It's a very <laughs> kind thing to say, but there are so many rabbit holes in my life. I am surprised there's anywhere left to dig. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people, a lot mm. of people suffer from this. They suffer mm. from the endless script or right. worse yet, the endless series oh, when you yeah. write episodes of something. Yeah. Someone I know told me that she had been writing a script for four years. Gosh, that's like 28 years of dog's life, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Poor <laughs> dog. And I, I assumed that she had been polishing, like rewriting the same script. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, well, how do you feel about it? And she said, I'm writing my way through to find out how it ends. Oh. I don't know if she ever finished it. Still writing it now? Uh, this I minute? Uh, I, I have no <laughs> idea. Sadly, TV had, has taught us that a story doesn't ever have to end as long as it makes advertisers happy. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah. you know, Lost Lost did end and everyone was very unhappy and mm -hmm. Game of Thrones and oh, I could list for a few years here. People people never seem happy with endings, did they? The black tape suffered from that. Although, actually, Breaking Bad was, was quite groovy. I quite like that. It's quite Breaking funny. Bad was totally groovy. I think it's because uh -huh. the writers knew where they wanted to end it. Yeah. MASH lasted longer than the actual Korean conflict. Yes. Yeah, I was True. I was watching Prodigal Son because I needed a fix of Michael Sheen. <gasps> Michael Sheen. I know, right? And and I needed a fix of Murder Mystery. <gasps> Murder Mystery. The butler did it. So I was eight episodes in and I'm thinking to myself, look out, everybody, spoilers. <laughs> I I'm eight episodes in. And I thought to myself, okay, we're gonna find out what the deal is with the girl in the trunk soon, right? Because it was <gasps> late on Saturday night, and I thought to myself, <gasps> okay. I can either watch yep. one more episode or I can go to bed. <laughs> what episode are we on? And I checked and I realized that this first season has 20 episodes. <laughs> They're teasing out this. There's a girl in a trunk. Is she real? Is she not real? Mm. Is she alive? Is she dead? Is she? She was Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's <laughs> girl in a trunk. <laughs> yeah. So they're mm. teasing out this thing. For 20 episodes. That's yeah. a ton of ad dollars, yep. but it's not a lot of commitment on the part of the characters to resolving this story. Yeah, I've got to say, I learned the hard way that longer is not necessarily better. Oh, Sarah, <laughs> let's, let's, as we all know, girth is what's important. <laughs> okay, let's keep the personal what? life off the podcast. <laughs> The term limited series, on the other hand, is pretty hot right now because it uses fear of missing out to get people to tune in. FOMO. FOMO. Mm. Yeah, right. FOMO is your friend. If you know how the story ends when you start, mm. it's easier for you to fill that finite space effectively. <gasps> start with the end. That's a bit brecht. Yeah. Uh, start with the end, um, <laughs> sort of. Uh, we could... I could show you... How I used a Harmon embryo or a Harmon circle over the course of an entire series with Yarn Soxa as oh, an yes. example, because that's how I planned the first season. Uh -huh. But it would that would take so long it would be its own episode. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Westworld season one mm -hmm. knew exactly how it was going to end. Yeah. So since they knew how it was going to end and they knew how they were getting there. They were able to play with non-linear narration in between. Yes, Montage City, it's, man. It, well, actually, everybody should read Betrayal by Harold Pinter. Oh, yes. Love a bit and of And if you can find it, it is very hard to find. The movie 
with Jeremy Irons, Ooh. can't remember the name of the lovely woman who was in it, and Ben Kingsley. Uh, that movie is very good. I was fortunate enough to also see it on Off-Broadway at the Roundabout Theater with Liev Schreiber, nice. Juliet Binoche, and John Slattery, and it wow. was wonderful. Yes, sounds awesome. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, anyway, it's it's that is a great example of nonlinear narration because Pinter knew exactly where this it begins with the ending mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it goes but it goes back to what is the most important moment in these three characters lives together. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the climax is the ending. Right. But the ending is the beginning. Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, so with mm. it, it basically my point is as long as you have a solid structured timeline, you can show how different characters surf or survive that timeline. Groovy. Okay. But what about, let's say, plotters versus panthers? I mean, what, is, what does that mean exactly? Is that important? Oh, God. I love this debate. I used to be a panther. Now I'm a plotter. Good job. I, I used to write when I felt like it, and I used to write when I felt inspired. Yep. And only about what I felt inspired about. And if I got it done that night or that day or that week, however long that blast managed to last before I lost enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, and that's why I didn't get a lot done. Uh -huh. Now I'm a plotter. The most freeing thing I ever heard was when I was in my very early 20s, a friend of mine and I were hanging out together and out of boredom or you know, this was what we did for fun. Yeah. We just sat down and I told her about a play that I was thinking about writing. And she said, well, have you written an outline? And she sat down and she just helped me write a little outline. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, let's just grab a scene and let's play with it. And it was the most freeing thing I've ever heard. A lovely friend. Yeah. I didn't have to be, I, I was no longer at the whim of my own energy levels or yeah. ADD. Yes. It was preserved in an outline and I could just take a scene and work on it. Yeah. Because I knew where it needed to end and I knew where it needed to begin. Super I didn't have the pressure of the whole outline. The rest of the outline could stay where it was. I could just think about that one scene. Super. So how about you, Sarah? Where do you sit? Well, uh, I think I sit mostly in my pants. But I'm bunks. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, yeah, you know, I, I'm a mixture, actually, I must say. I mean, I can absolutely just start to write and not know anything other than the initial idea, just to spark things off. And perhaps a few characters in sort of limbo who become clearer as I write them. There's also my, uh, you know, spiderweb planning, which I do, which I've got, you know, pages of these wonderful uh crazy pictures of, of things with um, little icons and words and all sorts. But I love to just write poems. I do that off the cuff a lot on Facebook mm -hmm. all the time. I just suddenly, I just want to make something out of an emotion or thought I'm having and or just pick up a ukulele when I'm waiting for something to upload that I've recorded as a voice actor and just record myself singing a song I'm making up on the spot. So you know, if you well, if you can call it a song, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes Sarah, I've, I've, se I've seen your creations on Facebook, and I have to say, <laughs> never build on borrowed land. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm re I'm actually really worried about this whole thing with Facebook going. Oh yeah, we're going to start doing audio now. Yeah, because Ooh. a freeze when mm. what what's the thing that i can't remember who said this i think it was matthew boudreau uh -huh. who said if you what is it if you uh if 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 you use a free service you are the product <laughs> you are the way that they make money and you it, all of these poems that you post on facebook yeah if facebook suddenly one day up and what if, you know, Chinese hackers completely destroyed all of their servers? Yeah. Or if one morning Zuckerberg wakes up in his pants and says, I'm pulling the plug on Facebook and yeah. that's it. All of your poems, all of your ukulele songs and everything will be gone. <laughs> it's possibly a good thing. <laughs> no, well, it's like a play, isn't it? You see it once it's gone. <laughs> yeah, well, you might want, you might want those things that you've written for later a bit more permanence maybe maybe uh, but it's okay let me put it to you this way everybody should have 
what Austin Cleon calls a swipe file. Okay. Austin Cleon is the guy who wrote, I think it's called Steal This Book. Uh uh-huh. he, he wrote uh, Keep Going. He writes artist creativity guides, and I subscribe to his newsletter, and I love him. Mm-hmm. And he talks about having a thing called a swipe file, mm-hmm. which is like every time you see something like an interesting quote or a interesting piece of visual media or you know, a nice flower or something, you put it in your in your little notebook, that's your swipe file. And then when you need ideas later on, you can go back and dredge from that. I see, I see. Using Facebook as a swipe file is a terrible idea. (laughs) Because again, those that information could just be gone. Yeah. That's true. If you want permanence and, and you want yeah. yeah to utilize things in the future. I think but then yeah. you go, see that's my it's also very thing easy. though, right? That's me just I just blur it out to where I have genuine friends in my life and people who are family and people who I've never met but are probably through podcasting no. <laughs> and I just popping it Okay. Out. Just because I do. <laughs> but yeah. Because you're a junkie for the likes. Do you reckon? Well, it doesn't get many likes. I mean, let's face it. (laughs) So that can't be true. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, and I mean, I think that you're very tuned into this is how creativity is now. Mm. And that's it's spontaneous and it's there. Yeah. And that's totally fine. And meanwhile, I'm the one who's like, no, I must be at home in my dark little cave writing in my little tiny notebook and planning everything. (laughs) Yeah, I must sit here and plan everything and chisel it in stone and rewrite and polish until it is perfect. What's the right way to do it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then I will release it to the world. (laughs) I'm imagining you in one of those long um, masks they had in the plagues of the 1600s writing like that. (laughs) How did you know? I own two of them. This is actually, boy, are we going off script today. I I own two plague masks and my brother owns one. Amazing. Yeah. No, seriously, I have, there was this amazing th- theater experience in New York called Sleep No More that's made by Punch Drunk, which oh, is a groovy, UK yeah. company. Yeah, I love them. And Sleep, Sleep No More is a immersive mm. dance mystery (laughs) escape room Mm. everything version of the scottish play Uh right well we're not we're not in a theater so we can say Macbeth. (gasps) if somebody's listening to this if somebody's listening to this inside a theater and they heard me say Macbeth, you have to go outside turn around three times spit over your shoulder curse and then knock on the door and wait for somebody to let you back in but um when you when you're in it as an audience member, they give you a huge white plastic mask to wear over the uh, upper half of your face. Nice. And it has a beak that yep. comes out in the front. Glorious. So you're walking around these incredibly dark rooms and then you see these like glowing white faces coming toward you, which is terrifying. Mm-hmm. But then you realize glowing white face coming toward me is another audience member. Right. So you realize it's like we're all ghosts together. Uh, no, 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 it's no, no, no. yeah. So I still have my masks from Sleep No More because I love them so much. Hooray! Yeah, but they look like they they do look like plague masks. Amazing. But yeah. But yeah, but anyway. I mean, just regards to to you know being inspired. I think I just sometimes then just lose that spark or just have to live real life. You know, like in ten minutes, I have to go and pick up my children, for example. Yeah, and, and in ten minutes, you know, I have my, to. I have another Zoom meeting after this. Yeah, so, you know, it's we have all these other things. I, I can see how people, it's like you get the spark, It's it feels really good, and then you lose the spark. And then you get the spark again. There is a animated short film called Ryan. Yes, I watched that. Which it's beautiful and crazy and wonderful. Isn't it and amazing? Just, yeah, superb. So sad. Mm. But there's it's about an animator who had this amazing burst of creativity yep. and recognition early in his career and then lost it. Yeah. He also was uh, a drug addict and an alcoholic and it ruined his, his chemical dependencies ruined his life. Mm. Um, but the guy's brilliant. There's a line in it at about halfway through the movie where somebody says the first flush of addiction produces some amazing work. And life can be spent really trying to get that moment back. I love that. And Mm. if you have to wait for the moment when your creative juices are really flowing, you'll never get anything done. Oh, 
Oh, which reminds me, I need to get back yes. to that high script. I really do. I, I just, I just had an idea now on how the leading lady can distract the guards, Lindsay, and I, I think I need to write it now or I'll forget it. Okay, so you are just some kind of ideas firework, and as soon as the spark yeah. ignites like a Catherine wheel, you spit out glorious individual moments that then fizzle and cease to light up the darkness when they're spent. That's just about sums it up, I think. But uh, one day, one day, I am going to finish one more thing, Lindsay. Now, that is a whole other episode. Indeed. <laughs> one day I will finish something off. And it, it will be like like New Year's Eve 1999 to 2000. <laughs> Where you don't remember much of 1999 uh, or how you got to bed mm -hmm. or why you exist uh, or what was in that Chinese beer. Yeah, the fireworks were awesome, weren't they? Well, um, thank you for listening, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Did you? <laughs> Groovy. And feel free to ping us your thoughts or ideas for future episodes on writersadwit at gmail.com. Yes, please. And of course, we would love for you to share, rate, and review this podcast oh, do. so more folks can get inspired. Hey, Sarah, I just remembered something there. Yes, ma'am. Are only a few days left in the month of April. Yes, there are. And on Podchaser, every time you leave a review. <gasps> yes. They donate to Meals for Wheels. They do. 25 cents, don't they? Um, legends. Yes. So, yeah, jump on and give us a review or yeah. any audio fiction podcast. Yeah, just review, 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 review. It's Everybody. a good idea. Um, and, yeah, but we would love for you to share and rate and review this podcast so more folks can get inspired. Yes. And, uh, hey, Lindsay, have you got, um, got any more of that wine? left at all. Sarah, you do not have to look to a bottle for inspiration. Yeah, I do. Actually, see, I was going to base my leading lady character on the description of the wine. What was it again? Was it full-bodied, elegant, ripe, great with cheeses or something? I think you have just perfectly described the person I want to be there. <laughs> Indeed, I have. Bye-bye. Happy writing. Bye -bye. Happy writing, Avanti. <laughs>